And Wallace Senior here, joined by my man, Mr. David Jacoby, and George Sedano's in the house, yes, sir. Yes, I know all you guys, and we were talking before the show started. Don't care how you're doing. So let's okay. get started okay. with... That hurts my feelings. Going Places, presented by Toyota. First up, the king and I, LeBron. He just continues to put the calves on his back. Last night, poured in 32 points, grabbed 13 boards, dropped seven dimes. But his nemesis, Lance Stevenson, was all in his grill, even baiting him into a late game tech. After the game, LeBron talked about it. Listen to the King speak. I mean, I should should never got a tech in the first place. I mean, there's a timeout call. This guy's following me to my bench and then give him a little nudge and he falls to half court. Come on. <laughs> but I should know better. It's, <clears throat> I, I should know better. I've been dealing with this since elementary. It's like I tell you a joke. You know, I tell you a joke and then you laugh and you get caught. That's what happened. Lance told me a joke. I laugh. Teacher called me. Now I got to go see the principal. So that's what happened. Mm, Jacoby, Lance's antics. Love it or leave it? You know I love it. Mm. You know I love it. LeBron James is the best basketball player on the face of the planet. He's averaging 32 points in this series. Lance Stevenson is averaging 10. And here we are, leading sports nation, talking about Lance and Lance and Lance. Yeah. I love everything about it. He flops so hard. He's got the guitar thing going. He's tackling people, holding the ball over his head. He's just, he just makes the game so much more fun to watch. And you cannot beat LeBron James at basketball. You <laughs> right. You know, you cannot beat LeBron Gotta James at else. playing basketball. You have to do this kind of weird stuff, and Lance does it better than anybody else in the whole entire Lance world. is three things. He is talented, he is an entertainer, mm -hmm. and he's an irritant. And you know what? Yeah, Give yeah. me those guys on my team all day, every day, especially the talented irritant, okay? <laughs> Give me Marcus Smart. Give me yeah. Patrick Beverly. Give me Kelly Olynyk. Lance is in that class. I want those dudes. Della Vadova? Oh. Delhi? Yeah, yeah. Dirty Delhi. Dirty Delhi. Dirty Delhi. Dirty Delhi. The talent part? Did, did you guys see the travel with Lance's oh, travel? Oh, my God. That was Kelly, hilarious. He was just walking with the ball. Like somebody <laughs> forgot he was playing basketball yeah. in the middle of the playoffs. I love the Lance answer. Yeah, I love it, too. I mean, you talk about a team atmosphere. What can become? contagious is seeing a guy with this level of emotional investment like everybody's going out there and trying hard everyone's going out there and trying to do everything in coverage do what the play is said to be done but this is a dude who is so into it maybe not both feet crossing the line but one of them certainly has yes. passed the line and you love that when you're a coach when you're a teammate because it just makes you get riled up even more for the moment. And by the way, that's a jump ball. I don't care what no, anybody says. Not, not the second one. No, 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 not no, the no. second one. He grabbed the ball. It happened to be on the other side of his head. What are you talking about? That's a jump ball. I'm with Shaq and Charles think yesterday. That's a foul. You don't think that's no. a foul? No. No, the he ball was on the other side of his head. Him. The you second one, no. That he he used elbows ball. to that, get to the that second one. That one is a jump ball. Yeah, the yeah, first, the first one, one was a jump ball. Both he, jump ball. You, both jump come ball. Come on, play on. Let's go. All right, play on. Let's move on then. And it won't happen again. And that's what we're going to talk about right now with the OK3 and focus on you, Westbrook, who will be fired up for a crucial game for tonight in Utah, Saturday night. Ricky Rubio gave Westbrook the business and became the first Jazz player to record a postseason triple-double since John Stockton, 2001. After the game, Westbrook Salty has some choice words. Listen to this. Uh, he made some shots, uh, you know, too comfortable. Uh, but I'm going to shut that off next game, though. Guarantee that. Ooh, George, uh, you think Russ is too worried about Rubio? Yes. The answer, the short answer is yes. He's too worried about Rubio. You're down two to one against one of the best defensive teams in the league. Right. And by the way, you haven't given Ricky Rubio enough respect. Right. Okay. You basically said, I'm going to let you shoot. And then he made you pay for it. So now's when you're going to get in on this series. By the way, he's also made you look bad. Russ has been inefficient in this series because Ricky doesn't get enough credit for being a great defender. There There's something very strange going on with Russell Westbrook in this series. In the fourth quarter, he didn't take a shot. Right. Remember we used to criticize him because yeah. he was taking the ball away from Durant or he used the ball too much? He didn't take a shot in the fourth quarter. In the previous fourth quarter, he didn't really shoot either. It's very, very strange going on. He needs to be concerned with that. And also, Rubio was 6 for 10 on jump shots off the dribble. That's just not who Ricky Rubio is. Mm. Russell Westbrook doesn't have to do anything different. Ricky Rubio just had a night in, in that last game, and you'll see tonight, Ricky Rubio's not going to go out there and do what he did last time. Yeah, he's probably expecting them to regress to the mean. I understand that in the mid-range game, but in game two, Ricky Rubio made five three-pointers. So Westbrook's like, you're not on alert for game three when you see a guy go out there and make five three-pointers. I understand you're looking at the back of the jersey, you're seeing Rubio, so you're like, I'm not going to contest those. And in the game plan, I understand that you're going to try Donovan Mitchell out before Ricky Rubio, but you should have already been on alert. One, it's the playoffs, and two, the dude has shown you already in this series 
he could make some buckets. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. All right, let's talk about the Portland Trail Blazers. And Dame time is up. That's the question going around, and the Blazers got swept right out of the playoffs. And many around the league think it's time to blow this team up. Dame Lillard said he's not sure what the team is missing, but he doesn't think him and C.J. McCollum need to be split up, saying this, as I quote, I don't agree with it. I think it's that simple. I think it's the easiest thing to say. I don't agree with it, though. You just said that. I'm not the guy making decisions. It's a great organization. I think everyone has done a great job. We've been in the playoffs five years straight. George. Where do the Blazers go from here, though? You know what? Sometimes the easiest thing is the smartest thing, okay? And they do have to blow this thing up for two reasons. He also went on to say that he felt like, you know, look, we have a backcourt much like the Warriors. No, you don't. Clay Thompson is an elite, <laughs> an elite two-way defender, and you yeah. don't have that. You have a yep. smallish backcourt, okay, that doesn't compare to what Clay brings to the table. The other part is this. They don't have a ton of flexibility, Marcellus. Mm -hmm. So one of those guys is going to have to move for them to make a big splash and change that team. Could you team. not squeeze those two defensively in between Clay? and Steph, and then that kind of averages out to be the same? No. 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 Okay, just question. Play basketball? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> different than watching the Blazers play basketball. You say not a ton of flexibility. Mm. That's almost an understatement. Like, look at these contracts that they signed oh, in the yeah. summer of 2016. It's embarrassing some of the players that they have. Look at this. So you got Dame and CJ. They're tied up. They're going to be tied up for $53 million next year. And then you got Evan Turner, two yeah. years, 36. Ooh, ooh. Harkless, two years, 22. You can't ooh. move these players. Myers Leonard does not see the floor, and they play him about $10 million a year. Then you've got Nurkic coming up. The first thing they have to do is not re-sign Nurkic. Mm. They're going to want to keep him together. He's going to be a restricted free agent. Some other team's going to offer a bunch of money. And then I be stuck with Nurkic, stuck with those contracts, stuck with the same backcourt, and then they're going to look at themselves and say, oh, maybe we really do have to move Dame or CJ towards the trade. Yeah, that Turner contract and the Leonard Myers, Myers Leonard contract, oh, those right. are bad contracts. Mm -hmm. Nurkic, restricted free agent, you let him go, you drafted Zach Collins for a reason. I like Zach Collins. Yeah, they yeah. only have, I think maybe it's a scoring issue. Uh, you got two guys who score in the 20s, obviously McCullum and Lillard, 21 and 26. But then the only other guy who averages double digits is Nurkic, and he's not on that list of all the guys making all that money. So when you talk about what happens in the playoffs, we can focus on the defense, but what's the best defense? A great offense. I mean, sure. put some more points up. Only three guys over double digits in points? To me, that's a bad scenario with that much money paid for that roster. Also kind of funny to me that they're such good friends. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like McCollum and Dame are like, they're famously just very, 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 very close. Their mothers are friends. They hang out all the time. It's just like, and maybe that could mess up the chemistry if you lose Look one at of those. Lowry and DeRozan. We've been talking about exactly. them for a number of years, too. Same situation. All right, guys. Well, bad news in Portland, and then bad news on the show is three cheers. Huh? Oh, no. One cheer for James Hart and the Beard. Timberwolves. This is hard near ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three. I love that. <laughs> Where'd that go? <laughs> Where did it? Ah. Ah. He did it three times. Towns went back to that joke over and over again. They've done a good job against him these last two games. getting tired again. Two cheers for Kyle Seeger. Mariners and Rangers and Seeger slips and oh, fails yeah, to make on. it out the batter's box. Yeah. <laughs> start doing push-ups. That's the only yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, Your real. only play is to start doing push-ups. That's one yeah. way to save 90 feet. bang out some push-ups. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ain't running that 90 today, yeah. coach. Yeah. <laughs> that is a tap out right there. Yeah. And three cheers for Lance Stevenson. Of course. Always. Oh. Cavs. But yeah, his whole game. This is Stevenson forgets the dribble. The encore. I love yeah. it. This is, this, I like his, his response. Like, yeah. what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Travel. And he's looking up at the monitor, too, just like, to check it out. Yeah. Like, did I really travel? Oh. What about oh, Kendall needs to have so no good. impact, though? It's yeah. so good. I didn't even blow the whistle. What Coming do you mean? Up, UCF unveiled a 2017 National Championship banner and gave players rings over the weekend. Ooh, mm. fellas. Y'all down with this? We'll talk about we'll it next. We'll see. Sports Nation is presented by Toyota. Let's go places.